Machine Learning. Our brother, Engineering Cannabis, who's in the house this morning. My brother, Engineering Cannabis, is in the house this morning. He's an artificial intelligence expert. He's a machine learning expert, and he's come on this channel, and he's talked about how you can get into AI and machine learning. It's about statistics, guys. And you don't need a PhD to do this. And it's a hot area right now. And there is a shortage into these roles. So it's an opportunity for you if you're in college or if you want to do a career switch to consider going into something like machine learning. And let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Machine learning specialists can earn a median salary of $150,000. Guys, it's a median salary of $150,000 off the top. Damn! You're getting paid, all right? You see my man's here, 30 years old, making $67,000 a year. He could be doing a career transition up in his salary, $250,000 a year. Damn! But, but many people would be like, And they don't want to put in the work, but they want the money. They don't want to put in the work, but they want the money. Okay? But that's not us. That's not us because we're we're willing to put in the work. We're willing to put in the work. I have people every single day in our Patreon that talk us about their work that they put in. And they get results. And I have an opportunity to share that with you all. That's one thing I love about this. I get an opportunity to hear and to share it. My brother AJ, who I spoke to this week, who's a new Patreon member, he cut his graduation down six months by taking 18 credits this past semester. Cut his credits down or his graduation down by six months because he decided to take 18 credits. When I first talked to AJ last year, AJ was just going into his program and he was like, Antoine, I'm a sales executive, inside sales engineer. I want to get to the bag. And one of the things I don't have is an education. He has a AA, an associate's degree, so he does have education, but he wanted to get his bachelor's degree. He wanted to get his bachelor's degree. And I got him along the way and said, start to prepare yourself to hit the market because you are a professional. You already have 17, 18, 20 years of experience already. You have to start thinking about the road that you want to be in. And he said, ah, no, 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 Antoine, we ain't going to do that. I'm going to just get my feet wet into the program. And I said, okay, well, I know you're going to be reaching out saying, I got my hands around this. I'm ready for the next move. And that's what happened this week. AJ put in the work. And instead of him graduating into next summer, he's graduating this December. And he's already aligning his resume to sales executive roles that's paying, that will pay him over $100,000. And I'm helping with that. It's a mindset, guys. It's a growth mindset. It's a, I got to get it figured out and then I'm going to go for it. And if I can't do it myself, I need to hire a coach. And that's where Black Heights comes in at. But let's jump over back to the article. Machine learning, $150,000, guys. That's a good salary. (laughs) That's an A salary right there. That's big time. That is big time. Machine learning specialists are highly sought after right now. Recruiters and experts told Insider... They were facing an acute shortage of machine learning skills as the demand for specialists in artificial intelligence moved beyond tech and into sectors such as healthcare. Machine learning is commonly used for form of artificial intelligence that involves the use of self-learning programs and algorithms. It underpins a lot of services from the movies Netflix recommends to fraud detection for banks. So you think about it, guys. Machine learning is what's being used on YouTube. You go and watch one of my videos, it recommends you to another video because it looks at patterns of the people that you watch, the people that other people watch, 
the people that are connected to you and tries to find a recommendation for you based on all the data behind it. That's what machine learning is. Netflix as well. You go and watch one movie, and the next thing you know, Netflix recommends something else. 98% match. That's what machine learning is. And our brother engineering cannabis, who's in the chat right here, knows all about it because he's in that space. He's making over $150,000 a year. So if you're in that role for quite some time, you've been making a big bag, guys. A big bag. But in a national survey of business conducted in June by the UK's Department of Digital Culture, Media, and Sport, about the quarter of respondents reported a shortage of machine learning skills. The hiring market is competitive for qualified candidates. Analysis of, U- analysis of U.S. data disclosure of foreign labor hires in 2021 shows base salaries for machine learning engineers range from 73 to 250K, with a median of 152,000. European and U.K. salaries, however, tend to trend a little bit lower. But with the demand for machine learning engineers outpacing the supply, Insider spoke with recruitment experts and academics and machine learning late bloomers to find out the top tips for those looking to pivot to machine learning. Here's what it is, guys. They're looking at, and they've spoken to experts that are in this space, and they're giving you the game on how you can get in. But I would say this. Go back and watch that video that I did with AI and me engineering cannabis and get the game from there as well. Because he gives you a path, a simplified path of how you can get into the space. You don't necessarily need to be a PhD, but prepare, prepare to work hard. While machine learning engineers come from highly academic backgrounds, the number of roles now requiring machine learning skills has helped open up the job market. There will be a class of roles that require top level skills, probably people who've done PhDs and had that very academic route. But the vast majority, the vast majority of the 238,000 roles that are open right now don't need a PhD. So you don't need a PhD to get into machine learning. You don't need it. There's a middle ground where you don't need to know the statistical foundations of absolutely everything to be able to identify which models are appropriate in which setting. So our brother AI me gave us the game. Understand statistics, linear equations, and so forth. Basic statistics. There's also middle ground they're saying as well, where you don't need to know everything. You don't need to know all of the statistical foundations. You can know the basics and still find a middle ground to be able to identify the appropriate setting for some of the models that will be created. It's a bit sector dependent and depends on the size of the organization. So universities can also attest to the change as companies scramble to recruit grads with machine learning skills. Historically speaking, most people probably went on to do a PhD rather than directly into the industry. Right. But there is some shift there. We have way more students going directly into the industry and startups instead of to a Ph.D. So schools are starting to change and students are starting to change. Their path instead of becoming a Ph.D., they go directly into the industry. Ivan, a research engineer at DeepMind, studied public relations in advertising at Moscow State University before working as a corporate strategist at a digital marketing company. He had been interested in computers since a childhood, but didn't pursue that passion until much later in life. I didn't understand what questions to ask and where to find guidance. That's like many of us. We do something completely different. It could be in supply chain, could be in warehousing, could be in marketing, could be just in business, business administration, could be in I don't know, criminology. We want to do something different. We want to get into tech. Many of us are scared of that transition. I talked to a gentleman yesterday. He's a sales manager. He wants to do sales in tech. It's an easy transition for somebody like that who's been doing it for quite some time, who has leadership skills. You just need to work with the right people, target the right companies, build relationships with people for somebody to give you an opportunity. 
the most important thing is to make sure you have a digital footprint in a resume that shows that you have the ability to sell. But that's no different than any other role that you've done. Think about it from the standpoint of this gentleman here, public relations, now doing machine learning. He started taking vacations to participate in week-long hackathons and completed in online competitions. A data science community too owned by Google where participants hone their skills through challenges. After years in the field, I think I've covered most of the gaps in my education to a level where I think it's hard to tell I don't have a STEM background. But it was tough sometimes. It took time. It took him putting in the work. It took him working with people. And he ended up accomplishing his goal. He ended up accomplishing his goal. So guys, you got to put in the work. Ultimately, that's going to get you to any sort of success in your life. You have to put in the work ultimately. And just because it's a nice salary, like 150000 it doesn't mean that you're going to get it if you don't put in the work. One thing I want to make it clear on is, you know, with this push for tech, I think there's some people that think they can come into here in a space earning 200 k No, you have to have the skills. You have to have the experience in order for you to get to that level. And I want to make that very clear. I want to make that very clear. Find ways to learn on the job or in your spare time. For anyone hoping to emulate Labov, he said it was important for wannabe machine learning engineers to find approachable tasks that motivate you. I found Kaggle to be the most useful tool, he told Insider, but don't aim to be a grandmaster. Use them to motivate you to learn more skills to go into the nitty-gritty details of algorithms you're using. I had no formal background in machine learning or computer or computers. So I had to learn a lot from scratch while on the job. I found, or I would keep a running list of all the things that came up that I wanted to learn more about and would read up on them in my spare time. Frankie Hackett recently won the Rising Star in Tech Award of COGX Awards in London in recognition of her work at the AI firm Engine B, which is applying machine learning to accounting and auditing services, but she wasn't always set to be a techie. Winning a tech without being a techie. Winning a tech without being a techie. Let's talk about the third thing. Whatever your background is, don't be intimidated. Guys, it's an opportunity. But you you have to understand, you have to put in the work in order for you to do so. You have to find tools. You have to find ways to learn. You have to do it on your free time a lot of the times as well, too. Boot camps can help, yes. But if you really want something, you have to go on and get it. You have to accomplish it yourself. Work with others to help you accomplish that, to keep you on path to accomplish it. That's why I am a big fan of coaching, which, by the way, I got to get a coach for my new role right now to keep me on track with everything that I have going on. I need a coach. And I have one that I'm going to be talking to next week. Whatever your background Don't be intimidated. After earning an MBA from the London Business School, Sundaram launched a startup, Fosho, to help make supply chains more sustainable via AI. She learned the basis with the London School of Economics and Political Science online course, Machine Learning Practical Applications. Overcoming others' doubts was by far the biggest challenge, she said. I knew I was capable of mastering machine learning and AI, but as a woman in a business, particularly in tech, those around me had other ideas. This is a woman who has a MBA, right, went to business school, people doubted her because typically in the tech space, it's a bunch of men, just what the tech or what the tech space is. And she says, okay, I'm going to learn it from my own. I'm going to learn it on my own. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to stop me. Don't be put off by the hype. And I'll talk around how hard it is to work in this field. There is a lot of hype around artificial intelligence and machine learning. AI me mentioned that in our discussion as well. Yes, there are tricky concepts and challenges, but it's not magic. It's not beyond you. Find people who can explain things in simple terms. These are normally the best people to help you learn and grow. 
An unconventional background can work to your advantage, guys. Transitioning from a different sector can also be a great advantage. People with very, a, a variety of job histories can or come up with a whole list of transferable skills. Deep Minds, Fatiha, uh, Fatiha, sorry, agreed, telling Insider there was a real need for a diversity of perspectives in machine learning space. Another thing AI and me talked about, right? Because if you're building programs and you only have a certain view on things, it may hurt other people. Diversity is very important. That's why we need to be in these spaces. And he mentioned that in the conversation that we had. Court judgments. All sorts of things, AI and machine learning is being used. And if the right people with the different thoughts are not being the ones that's being included into these programs, they end up, those programs end up making people like you and I, they don't give us the benefit of the doubt. They don't help. They may hurt. So it's important for us to get into these spaces. Some of the most insightful conversations I've had with DeepMind have been with research scientists who had a background in medicine, the performing arts and philosophy. As for reskilling or as for a reskilling process, candidates shouldn't count themselves out over a lack of technical experience. That's it, guys. Four tips that you can get into this. And at the end of the day, if I was to summarize this, just work hard, guys. You don't need to have a PhD, right? Find ways to learn on your job. Have your job send you to a boot camp or find some tools that's out there that will help. Do it on your spare time. Wake up on a Saturday morning like I wake up to give you guys this game. Spend an hour. Spend an hour. I'm learning something new. It's going to be more than what your peers are doing. Don't be intimidated if you have a background that's not into tech. And that's what most people are intimidated by. And I share this all the time. You have transferable skills. You have transferable skills. Tech is just you working for a tech company, which typically tech companies are growing and they pay higher. Getting into tech is no different than you just working for a tech company to have a product or service to sell. You don't have to be in a technical role because that's just not your sweet spot. But you can still be into tech, have a non-technical role, and still make a shitload of money. A lot of money, guys. And if you go into sales, you can make a shitload of money. I'm sure I shared that with you. You can have an unconventional background and do this as well. Philosophy. Arts. You can transition into a role like machine learning. 